My name is Malcolm Anderson and I am a hemp grower in North Carolina. We have a uh, farm in Chatham County, uh, North Carolina, and we are a startup farm. This year, we, it's our first year uh, growing industrial hemp. I usually say it's, it's cannabis, but it doesn't get you high. It's the cannabis that doesn't get you high, but gives you all the medicinal effects. Uh, because it's 0.3, less than 0.3 THC, you, there's no way you could get high. Um, but you get all the medicinal effects from the plant. So the landscape in North Carolina is, we are one of 400 uh, so licensed uh, folks. Uh, when we got in it, uh, we were only one of 250, but people have gotten licenses uh, so far this year. But uh, North Carolina has a research pro uh, pilot program, and this is the sec sec second year, but it's the first full year that they have their, you know, their plants a full, full growing season. The we is me and my wife. My wife, Clorinda uh, Stanley Anderson, uh, She's the CEO, I'm the COO. I grow the plants and she does the, the business side of the, 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 uh, the business. My uncle uh, had cancer uh, and he had pancreatic cancer. So when you hear pancreatic cancer, you know that you know, from what the re I researched, was a, it was a death sentence. Uh, so you, you, know, you wanna keep your family members around, so you look at, you know, you look at the internet, you look at the, you know, everywhere you can find, try to find a, a solution to help you know, your family member. And I found uh, out about Rick Simpson, uh, Rick Simpson oil, and uh, cannabis oil, cannabis extracts, and started to research it. And you know, that was the day I said, you know, when my uncle passed, and I got a two o'clock phone call, you know, and uh, it was like, you know, he's gone. And it it, it kind of catapulted me to say, hey, you know, this cannabis, you know, cannabis and hemp and all that stuff can help with cancer, and and and, and in some cases, you know, eliminate it. Um, anecdotally, of course, but uh, you know, it's, it, it was a ray of hope for me. So that's what you know spurred me on to say, hey, you know, when this plant becomes legal in my state, I want to be at the forefront of growing it and 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 you know providing it for my you know personal you know reasons. You know, I'm a veteran with PTSD, um, and I don't like the medicines they give me at the VA, um, for one. And I see that you know um, you know CBD definitely helps. Uh, with my, you know, I played sports in the army, um, and played sports, you know, growing up. So, you know, I got all kind of tendonitis, uh, chronic pain, you know, um, and it helps. You know, I came out to Colorado and tried a CBD uh, product, and it took the pain away. So I, I said, hey, when this comes legal in North Carolina, I wanted to be uh, one of the first ones to get into it. I was just out here on, a, I was on uh, on a business trip, and I took and I and I, and I was. Uh, I saw a guy on 16th Street. It, he had a CBD uh, booth at, a, at, at the fair and gave me a CBD cough drop. And I swear he must have put a Jedi mind trick on me because I, saw, I told him I had you know, elbow tendonitis you know, and uh, old football injury. And he was like, here, take this. And before we finished talking, my elbow felt better. So I knew you know, it's hitting on something. It was hitting, you know, it took the pain away. So I was a believer. I don't need you know, triple blind studies to, to know that, hey, it was, not, it was hurting and that was not, this is a good thing, let's figure out how can we uh, you know, use this. Because you know, your family members, you know, I have family members with you know, epilepsy, uh, high blood pressure, cancer, you know, who, who survived cancer. My sister's a cancer survivor, my aunt's a cancer survivor. Um, you know, and this plant, from all the, my, my research, um, my YouTube university, um, it, it heals. It, it brings you back to a, a balance. So that's what we, you know, we want to bring this plant more available to people who don't know about it. One of the challenges of starting was just getting the information that we needed, you know, um, and trying to figure out how we, we, we get started, how we get our license. Um, and that was a process in itself. And just by going to conferences like this, you meet people in the industry who can help you, um, you know, people who already have their license, you know, they, they, they helped me uh, learn the process and learn what I needed to have um, to get, you know, get the license in so we can start. Um, and then it was, and it's all about relationships when you, when you meet people, you know. I, I we, we procured our seeds from a guy we met at a conference. You know, these are the types of things that people are in the industry. And, you know, we want to be a, 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 you know, my thing is, we come out to the conferences and we see, you know, uh, a whole lot of people, but it's not a lot of diversity in there. We want to be a, a face for, for diversity to show some people sh to be an example. To see, I saw somebody out here, uh, actually, 
who was the first you know, African-American dispensary owner. And she was amazing and she inspired me. So, you know, I want to do that. Uh, we want to do that in North Carolina. We want to, you know, uh, be a face of diversity and say, hey, this industry is for everybody. Well, when people ask me what Green Heifer Farms is, because I always wear my, we, we got our own clothes, we got our own, you know, shirts. They ask me, what, what, is, what is that? What is CBD? Most people, you know, don't know what CBD is, uh, I find. Younger people are more hip to it than, than, than folks, but um, when, they, when they find out what I do, I say, well, I grow weed, legal weed, you know, just to break it down, because they don't know what cannabis or, you know, hemp is, they're like, what is that? Um, and I just say, it's, just, it's the weed that doesn't get you high, but it get all the medicinal benefits from it. So, uh, you know, that, it's, it's been fun telling people, because they, they, I usually get a shock reaction, and then I usually hand them my card and say, oh, you legit. You know, because <laughs> otherwise they think you, you know, some kind of dealer or something. Well, I actually talked about somebody who, 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 who was like anti, uh, and I told him, I says, look, you know, this is medicine. You know, people, it's, it's a medicinal component to, you know, the, the plant. And when you see a, a kid who's having a seizure get, you know, uh, some oil under his tongue and they stop ha seizing, I mean, it's real. You know, or you see somebody with multiple sclerosis who, is shaking and they take two puffs or you know in a documentary and they they stop completely it's real to you so i don't like i said I, you know the triple blind studies mean something but you know if i can see it work i'm a believer we just did a little a small little acreage uh small little one and a half acres but a friend of mine franny from franny's farm she she had a, a big hemp field and she just had to it was she used to let people come in and walk around the field but she had to actually close the, you know, her farm off when they started to flower because people thought it was, you know, it was cannabis. So, you know, those are the type of things, you know, you're going to have to need security. You're going to have to need fencing, you know, just so. And then we all in North Carolina, we have to post signs to say, hey, low THC, do not take my plants. You know, and we had a whole program out there in North Carolina to, you know, the, the Industrial Hemp Commission and law enforcement, you know, they, they, they bundled together to train the law enforcement to say, hey, this is not weed. Although it looks like it, this is, you know, industrial hemp. Well, the first thing we had to do was acquire a license. Um, and that's first and foremost. You can't grow unless you got a license in North Carolina. And like I said, we're one of 400 uh, licensed growers as of, of now. Uh, and we were the first, one of the first ones in our county. Uh, one of, we're only one of two growers, I think, now in the county now. Um, and, it, and it just took, it took time, you know, you, t you had to plan out, you know, you had to come up with a strategy to acquire your license, you know, because it, it required a Schedule F, and luckily we had, we had farm income uh, to get, to, to, to pass, you know, the program. And then you had to know how to fill out the application because it was kind of difficult. So I got that information and I, you know, uh, from various people and I put it together, um, you know, to help new, farm new farmers come, come behind us. Um, and another thing, you gotta have that equipment. You know, you got to have a farmer, you know, growing a plant, you know, is one thing, but farming is a different thing. It's a lot of work. Um, farming is a long days and long nights and you got to, you know, you got, and, and you got to listen to the plant. So those are things that, you know, if you know the plant, but you don't know farming, partner with a farmer, you know, cause it's a different, you know, it's a different way of, of, of growing outside than the inside. You listen to the plant by what you, what you, you know, you, if it's, if it's, for instance, they, they, you know, they sag when they're dry, you know, they, 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 they droop when they, when they need water. Um, those type of things as far as listening to the plant, you know, most people, you know, want to go by a regimented feeding schedule, you know, uh, by the, by the bottle, what's on the bottle. But you, you, you learn to tune that, you know, from the, the doses that they give you. Maybe it's too high, maybe you might get newt burn. So that's what I mean by listening to the plant. The, the plant is going to tell you the way it looks on what it needs, you know, and, and you learn that over time and experience. The one thing that keeps me up at night about growing industrial hemp is you, you don't know, like, uh, you don't know what's going to happen with the weather. Like, for instance, Hurricane Florence, we didn't know it was going to hit us. Uh, but because of various projections. So on an outdoor crop, you got to worry about environmental stuff. You got to worry about army worms, um, that they were big in North Carolina. Uh, this year was one of the wettest seasons uh, in North Carolina ever. So, uh, you know, it was a lot of considerations in weather and, 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 uh, and we, don't, we can't insure our crop right now. So that was like, okay, are we going to lose it? Are we going to lose it? And we lost it, but we, you know, we paid for it. So we, you know, my father-in-law calls that tuition. 
we paid tuition for our loss this season, and you know we, we learned from it, and we, we're going to be better prepared next season. Next year, we're going to have greenhouses up, so our production will be constant. You know, we'll be constantly putting out flour, um, and then we'll, we will plant in the field uh, in May, hopefully, in May for the, for the long summer season. And, that's what, and we'll have the, the preparations and the equipment that we need to make sure our crop is successful, you know, getting in fencing, deer fencing, uh, those things that we didn't know this year that we're, they're gonna, because we heard various rumors. They don't like, deer don't like, doesn't like hemp, but they like the seedlings. And so, you know, and when you, if you're trying to start a crop, you actually have to be vigilant and pull guard duty over your crop. You are out there in a chair with a gun, with hopefully some night vision or some, or some flashlights, and then when the deer come out the woods, you just shoot in the air, you know, if you're a hunter, you, want, you get some deer. <laughs> but, you know, um, that's, you know, that's basically what you, you know, people had to do out in North Carolina who, who didn't have fencing for deer. Once you pull back the veil of all the disinformation that we've had over the last 80 years with prohibition, you realize that we have an endogenous cannabis, cannab cannabinoid system, and that's our symbiotic plant, you know, so that, that helps us uh, regulate our, our bodies, you know. Uh, and once you learn that from, you know, your researching around, uh, you know, you, you, you realize, hey, this, we've been sold a bag of goods, you know, and this plant is really uh, medicine, you know. And like I said before, once you see somebody with epilepsy take some CBD and they stop a seizure, that's all I needed. Anybody getting into the industry, I, just, I would just say just do it. Put some energy towards it, you know. Put energy towards what you want to do, you know, in research, in research and, and uh, research what you want to do, where you want to go. Talk to people who are in the industry. That helped me a lot by going to conferences like this one um, and meeting people in the industry who can give you advice um, on where to go and to come up with a strategy, you know, um, plan, you know, put it on paper, um, set deadlines for your plan. Um, and that's what, you know, I'm a veteran, right? And I worked for the government for 20 plus years. So I'm not an entrepreneur per se. Do your research, research some more, and then put your plan into action. I'm definitely hoping for the farm bill so that farmers can get insurance um, for one, for their crops, um, which is gonna lead to more investment. Because once people know they can't lose all of their investment, they're more apt to invest. You know, um, Right now, we're, we're the pioneers in, in, in hemp right now. We're taking the chance to, to, to buy the seed, buy the clones, put them out there without any insurance. You know, farmers got wiped out in North Carolina from the hurricanes. You know, all their money. I mean, I've seen some guys with GoFundMe pages because they got wiped out. Um, so, I mean, with federal legislation, that's going just going to open the industry up to more investment, more infrastructure, more processing, which will make it really more readily available to more to, to more people. From your farm to your shelf, once you you know you harvest your crop and you dry your crop and you all your your plants have to be tested. Right, so your, your 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 crop has to be tested to get an overall value, so it's less than 0.3 THC. So once you get them tested, you take them off the field, you you get them shucked, uh, you shuck them, and you put them in uh, either vacuum seal bags, and and then you take them to your processor if you want to process uh, for oil, or you you bag them up for you know vacuum seal bags to sell sell the bud, you know, and you know it's various different ways what you're gonna do with your plant, you know, uh, once you get, get finished with it. We initially planted, we planted um, one and a half acres um, as a, our test crop this year, you know, see how they do outside. Uh, they were growing well, um, the ones that didn't get eat, eaten by deer. And then when Hurricane uh, Flo came through, she just flooded the whole, you know, wind damage, uh, just rain, floods, and, and cannabis uh, in hemp, industrial hemp, it doesn't like wet feet. It doesn't like to be wet by its roots. So, you know, the flooding, they die off, and then you go out to the field and you say, ah, oh, babe, they're all gone, you know? Um, and which, which was disappointing, you know, which was disappointing for us, but, you know, we, we, what, what can you do? You move on, you know, you move on, and hopefully, like I say, next year we'll have the greenhouses and the production will be, you know, on a constant basis. So we, don't, we won't be so dependent on that summer crop. The summer crop is going to be your, you know, our, our, our boutique, our, our bonus. This is a, a business uh, that is a, a great opportunity for people um, of all races, creeds, and colors. This plant helps humans, um, and we want to be a face to show that, you know, this industry is going to have 
everybody included, you know, and we want to be a face of diversity and inclusion and let people know and, and inspire people like, you know, you know, like Wanda James inspired us uh, to, to get in this industry and to, you know, to have a, have a say in what's going and what's moving forward. Well, my wife uh, met somebody uh, at a conference and just started a conversation out here at NOCO um, and talked to the Hemp Industries Association and uh, they, she asked a question. She said she ever asked it, you know, it's your 10th, 10th anniversary of, of Hemp History Week. Have you guys ever had any people of color? Uh, and they said no. So she pitched it to them and we were selected for the 2019 uh, spokesperson uh, we're the first time, first couple uh, in Hemp History Week history to uh, be the spokesperson. It's a great opportunity for us uh, as a as a startup business to you know, and they're going to you know show our journey in in the hemp industry. My wife came up with the logo, um, and we have a cow, obviously green, with some industrial hemp in our mouth, um, and our name under it. And all I did was put ask to put the sun in there because we're going to be growing outdoor, um, <laughs> outdoor <laughs> grow. So uh, it, was, it was my wife's uh, collaboration. I just gave a couple ideas, but she came up with the name. She's the marketing genius behind uh, Green Heifer Farms. Heifer is an old southern, uh, you know, uh, old ladies, old church ladies wouldn't cuss and use foul language. So Heifer was about the, the hardest that she was going to uh, cuss. Uh, uh, Grandma Charity May. She was. She wouldn't. She wouldn't use cuss words. But heifer was the was her word. So, she. Uh, you know. That's what one thing. My, my wife always tells stories about her grandmother, and uh, she, because she was a big influence on her life, and uh, that's how the name came to be. Green Heifer Farms. You know. You would use heifer like like. Oh, that dirty heifer. Or you know. You're talking bad about somebody. Oh, them heifers give me give me. You know. Or wherever they would be at, whether it be in you know church or whatever, they'd be talking about somebody, and they would say that heifer, you know, and that's what. <laughs> it's not the correct spelling, but it's our spelling, you know. Uh, we know it's a cow, we know it's a female, but we changed this the spelling to to fit our purposes. The one thing I, I want you to remember, if you come to our farm, uh, is that we we're growing for a purpose, you know. We're growing we're growing to help uh, the world, to help people, you know. People are suffering. Out here, opioid crisis. Uh, I come from the inner city of Philadelphia, and you know, CBD and and, and cannabis has been shown to, you know, uh, alleviate those problems. So that's just one of the issues that you know that's dear uh, to my heart, um, and helping people. That's really, I mean, really, what it's about. You know, uh, if you can help your family members with seizures um, by giving them a plant extract, and we don't have to take pills all the time then it's just perfect, you know, it's, it's, that's the reason why we got into this. So we're looking for the farm. I think we're here. Hey, this is not it. No, this isn't it. This is not it. And they got some real dogs. This ain't it. No. Sorry, guys. Make sure you. Uh, look, <laughs> they dogs work. They ain't like our dog. I know. No, they well taken care of. Look, his ass. His ass. You can pet his ass. Move, 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 move. Don't bite the car. They might. I guess I ain't invited, but nah, they, they train. They get company. But they are Yeah, I see it. Um, huh? uh, we lost. Oh, stop. We lost. 
Hi, we're, we're looking for Franny. We're, we're looking. For, we're looking for Franny's farm. Oh yeah, that's, I think that's down there on the left, Bob. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really know this area too well, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's it, Bob. But yeah, I think they're doing like some sort of Hip barn roof. Yeah, that's huh? yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're doing like a barn roof down there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what it was. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 they I can tell. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I can tell yeah, they're good I'm boys. I'm sure it's down there on the left. I'm not exactly sure though. Okay. okay. Yeah. On the left. Yeah. Wait. So yeah. This I mean, way. Just go down there and peep it. I'm yeah. pretty sure though it's down there on the left. Okay. Yeah. Down. Thanks, man. This, yeah, wait, no, go. Sure. This yeah. left. Come on, What's up, big guy? <laughs> this left. Yeah. Because uh, he keep pointing that way. Okay. Because that's right. So, hold on. She said, make a U-turn. It did say make a U-turn. So you got a U-turn. Oh, it's probably one of those roads you can't get to from the right. Oh, that may be it. That's crazy, though. Yeah, I thought I had to keep going. That's, that's, that's weird. Oh, you can't cut across or something? That's odd. Um, now it says go here. So pretty. It's only one mile away. Okay, I'll be looking at the... How to drive in the country, y'all. A couple of times he's been caught, caught surprised by a um, curb. <laughs> Have it, you, babe. They say go that, go that. Oh, yeah, and drive and, and, and be in the middle of the road. Yeah. In a quarter of a mile, turn left. In a quarter. Why you got this accent? <laughs> Why? I want British. I want a British shirt. Oh. Okay, that's one. That's one perspective. My hair looks cute, babe. Yeah, Thank you. Turn left. It's my little thin side over here. There it is. Oh, I saw, I saw this. Turn left. I didn't. I didn't know it was. I didn't look at the sign because she was just going. Cute. Okay. Oops. I saw that. In 1,000 feet, your destination will be on the left. Mm -hmm. I'm already like, okay, we gotta get one of them signs. Yeah. Right. Um, keep going. 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 Keep Oh, this don't look like something Wait. for us. Wait a minute. Wait, what's over there? I, I see know. a little tent, teepee, something down there. <clears throat> hey, I don't know where we're going. We showing up in the Cadillac. You know we got to tighten our shit up. We need to be pulling up in here in the truck. Your destination is on the left. Oh, love it. This is sweet. Farm here. Pretty. Look at that love. I'm going to put you over there. Uh-huh. Look at that place right there. Yeah. Yeah. Flower. Yeah. See, I love seeing this. This is so inspirational. Yeah. That's all so I see. The hip, uh, Ain't the, the bar. Exactly. The bar. That's where we're taking pictures, babe. Yeah. That shit's gonna be hot. That shit's gonna be hot. Hey! Hey! How's it going? Good, how are you? Malcolm. Hey Malcolm, I'm <laughs> like Butler. I know Blake. I, we met you I met you at the uh the uh the um 
Mother Earth News oh, last right. year. Yeah. I had the overalls on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're here for a photo shoot. Oh, yeah, that's um, right. Brandy, uh, Donnie Rex and Franny go yeah. ahead and Malcolm pull right next to that green car right there. Okay. They're inside. We've got still some hemp hanging. Okay, okay. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I don't want to. Do, do I need. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, that's just pull right in there. Okay, right. I don't want to block it in. Yeah. Look how pretty the. Um... All right, I apologize. He's going to move it for you. <laughs> that's cool. So are you guys going to stay around and come back for the stuff? Oh, yeah, we're here. We're here. Right. Take so, it. We're here. So I just, I've been setting up everything. Franny and I have had like three seconds to talk to each other. I know, I know. I was out there teaching the guy when I was at the end. Yeah, but this is proof that um, it's good to have a team. You can't do it all yourself. Right. And that's what we're going to. I lost some of my curls and separated. Um, all right. Okay. She ready. Right. She ready. She ready. She is. What are you doing now? I'm getting my stuff together. Uh, yeah. Is that for every, everyone, huh? Hi. Hi. <laughs> in the family dollar Asheville Asheville North Carolina and we just decided to take a little inventory Perfect. of the cultural hair section work. and so we, do work. we admit this is not where green heifer products will probably be sold and we're gonna explain why. Are they really? Yeah. Where would you find fossilized hemp leaves? Well, they are now fossilized. Oh, gotcha <laughs> now, gotcha way. now, okay. Contemporary fossilization. Cool. You know, it's scalable because uh, long line fiber that's been rather in process is $25 a pound. <laughs> and, you know, and that makes sense, but then again, it only makes sense for me because I'll do three acres and I'll sit in the barn in the winter and drink whiskey and do the work, you know. <laughs> Can't have one without 